The message you're about to listen to is by Reverend Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. Remain blessed as you listen. Christ in Moses. Mm. I hope you have been learning something. Though. You know one thing? <laughs> it is repetition is the law of long and constant impression. What you repeatedly listen to and what you repeatedly do is actually what determines what your habits are and what your destiny will be. Any teaching you listen to once, you will not really get. Any least teaching you listen to and you do not even take notes of, you most likely will forget. Any teaching you don't, you know, make it a point of duty to go and listen to again and again. Even me that preach one of many of the sermons, what I do is when I'm driving, I listen to those messages on Telegram. I just listen to the mes messages and I get blessed myself. You understand? So make sure you listen to those messages again and again. Take notes. Go over your notes. Make sure you understand it enough to ask questions. Understand it enough to teach it. Hallelujah. It is very, very important. Don't attend midweek service or Bible study religiously. Just to attend or we just attended. No. Attend with an inquisitive heart to learn. Hallelujah. And to be able to be someone that, as a result of learning, you are able to teach it. Praise God. All right. So before I begin, please let's make sure that everybody, um, campus pastors, ensure your people are on the stream. Um, um, Surulere Pastor, Leke Pastor, Otta Pastor, and Ejibu Pastor. Please let's make sure everybody's on the stream. Then our Diaspora Centers UK, um, America, and Hungary. Please let's make sure everybody's on the stream also. Hallelujah. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 24, and verse 27, our team scripture. Just a reminder, ladies and men, ministry final day, we're going to be having a quiz competition. So that means after we are done, we want to now eat. While we are eating, we are going to have a quiz competition. All right? And it's going to be between the centers. All right? The branches. All right? So um, two um, members per branch. I think some branches already have their representatives. And the winner, the winner, we, the, the, ch the church that wins, the representatives, we share 100,000 naira. Praise God. All right? So it's going to be interesting. I'm setting the questions. And I'm going to be the one, do, I'm the quiz person. So I'm going to make sure that those questions don't leak. <laughs> you must end it. All right, let's go. St. Luke 24, 27. Let's read. And beginning at Moses, praise God. I hope the scriptures are projected on the live stream. All right. He said, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expanded unto them in what? All the scriptures, the things concerning what? himself beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself so we see that the scriptures are christ-centered moses and all the prophets moses and all the prophets in verse 44 of luke 27 he goes on to mention the psalms so we have moses the psalms and all the prophets now we have been focusing on moses all right since this series began and we have said that the writings of moses are what genesis exodus leviticus numbers and what the Deuteronomy. now i have given you a biological perspective of those five books where i explained their names and i explained um the reasoning from the greek septuagint and from what from the jewish torah all right so if you have not yet um, um we're not you miss any of the sessions please make sure you go and get them um i think some of them are on telegram already i think in christ and everything i talked about that all right and we've also looked at the passover is that correct exodus chapter 12 is that correct then we talked about certain things in the Passover, all right? But we will be revisiting Passover because we talked about the Passover, but we have not yet touched on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? On the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And today, I had earlier planned to talk about certain things in the book of Exodus that point to Christ, all right? But, um, so for example, there was, um, 
if you remember that there was a period in Exodus, I think in Exodus chapter, six, uh, Exodus chapter 16, where the children of Israel were looking for water and they got to the waters of Mara, and Mara, the waters of Mara were very bitter. And they murmured and they cried to God about the waters. Then God showed Moses a tree. The Bible says, and the Lord opened the eyes of Moses and showed him a tree. And uh, Moses was instructed to cut down that tree and cast it into those waters. And the bitter waters became what? Sweet. We will talk about that later and other things, you know, that has to do with Christological concepts in the book of Exodus and um, hopefully Leviticus and all. Because I don't even think that we'll be able to have time to conclude what I want to teach you this month because the syllabus is actually very very wide praise god all right so let us turn to exodus chapter number 12 and verse 1 we're going to be there for a while we're going to be looking at the passover exodus chapter number 12 and verse 1 now we will look at the passover then we are going to look at the unliving feast of unliving bread because there's a lot for us to see there because we're going to go from the feast of unliving bread then we will enter the communion conversation all right what we call it's popularly known as the Lord's Supper. But I want us to go through this, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept to understand what is what is being said. Now, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month, pay attention, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So what is going on here is that before exodus chapter 12 the children of israel had a calendar that they walked by okay all right they had a calendar that they walked by they had uh, times and seasons and they had months but god now said that all right at the institution of the passover which is what exodus chapter 12 is talking about he now says that that month where the passover was instituted is the beginning of months to them that means they are january was now the month of the Passover. Are you seeing this? He says, all right, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, the first month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Now, I just want to let you know, because we are looking at Passover, and we've said before and established that the Passover is talking about Christ. All right, First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. All right, Christ, your Passover is what? All right, is offered for you. So Christ is the Passover. In, in that God tells the children of Israel that the Passover month is the beginning of the month to them, shows us something very important. Until a man has encountered the Passover lamb, his life has not started. According to God, you are not yet living except you are in Christ. Are you, are you paying attention? So the day, the month where redemption happened was the beginning of month for them. They had pre-existed that month. But according to God, he said, this is when you start living. The moment the Passover um, sacrifice is offered. This is where you start living before me. This is when you are alive to me. The moment the sacrifice is offered. So no man is alive to God. Who has not yet accepted the sacrifice no man who is alive to god who has not yet received jesus all right no man enters into god's purpose and plans for his life outside of christ outside of christ no matter how rich that man is no matter how successful that man is because the plans and purposes of god for man is eternal and no man can enter into god's eternal plans and purposes outside of the internal christ glory to god he said, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. He said, speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the house will be too little for the lamb, I'm just reading, we've, we've read this before, but I want us to just follow. Let him and his neighbor next unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls, every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Five, everybody, we want to go. He says, what? Talk to me, everybody read, want to go. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up unto the what? Fourteenth day of the same month. This is important. Pay attention. They take it on the tenth day, then they keep it on the what? Fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. 
and they shall take up the blood and strike it on two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it and they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread so they eat the flesh roasted flesh of the lamb with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof and he shall let nothing of it remain unto morning and that which remaineth of it unto the morning ye shall burn with fire and thus shall ye eat it with your lungs gathered your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and he shall eat it in haste it is the lord's so that means the the sheep the lamb is the lord's is the lord's what so the lord's passover is a person it's not an activity oh come on now the lord's passover is the lamb is that correct is that correct so it is a person not an activity put your hand in exodus let us go to first corinthians 5 so that you can see what i'm saying first corinthians chapter 5 hallelujah verse 7 he said put out therefore the whole living that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened for even what even what christ our what passover is what sacrifice for us that word passover is the greek word pashka it means pascha lamp the passover is the lamp hallelujah the passover is what the lamp so the lamp is the passover is the passover offering because the lamb that passover offering was offered for the what for the escape for the what redemption of the children of israel now go back to exodus 12 so that we can continue reading where were we verse 11 he said and thus shall you eat it not gathered and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in ace it is the lost passover 12 for i will pass through the land of egypt this night and we smite all the first one of the in the land of egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of egypt i will execute judgment i am the lord and the blood can we change this mind i don't like how it's sounding all right and the blood shall be to you for a token this and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are and when i see the blood i will what pass over so that means the passover offering glory to god causes the angel of death to pass over all right those who have partaken of the offerings as you are going to see now who passed over god or the angel of death no wait we read it now eh? now look at it he says and this day shall be unto you oh no let's go and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when i smite the land of Egypt. and this day shall be unto you for a memorial and you shall keep it a feast to the lord throughout your generations you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever now can we go past because we're going to come back to the feast of unliving bread all right but now let us look at it says 21 then moses called for all the elders of israel and said unto them draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the passover so the passover is the lamb is that correct is that correct uh-huh and he shall take a bunch of isop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel the two side posts with the blood that is in the basis, uh, basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning for the lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seared the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow, listen, and will not what? Suffer the what? Will not suffer what? To come where? In unto your houses. So the question is this it was actually the destroyer that was killing people. Is that correct? Is that correct? So that means those upon whom the lintel blood was applied on the lintel, the Lord was not going to allow that destroyer, all right? into their homes are you seeing that and that destroyer was what a demonic spirit all right that caused death praise the lord i said praise the lord now so what do we see about the passover lamb look at eight things about the passover lamb and the feast of passover number one 
the lamb was to be spotless. That's number one. Eight things you see. The lamb was to be spotless. Number two, the lamb was to be a male of the first year. Number three, the lamb was to be taken from among sheep or goats. So that means in a company of sheep, the lamb is taken out of. I've explained this in previous, in earlier, in earlier sessions. All right, taken from among sheep or goats on the tenth day of the first month. Tenth day of the first month. Then the lamb was going to live with the um, offerers from the tenth day to the fourteenth day. The lamb was then killed on the fourteenth day after spending four days with those that were going to offer. Number five, the body of that lamb was now roasted with fire. The next thing is uh, number six, those who offered the lamb and roasted the body with fire were to now eat the roasted body completely in a hurry the same day. They were not to allow anything pass over to the next, uh, um, the next day, the same day. Number seven, they ate the roasted body of the lamb with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Okay, unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Number eight. All right, the lamb was not to be eaten raw or sodden with water, but roasted. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh huh. Now we've ex we explained this in earlier um, series that you know the spotless lamb is talking about the spotless lamb of God. The fact that it was made of the first year was referring to the fact that all right, it is um. Um, the Lamb of God is a male person. That means it's a, it's a, it's a male, not a female. All right? The fact that I was taken from among sheep or goat on the 10th day of the month was speaking to the fact that the Lamb of God was going to be taken from amongst men. So that means he was not going to be an angel. He was going to be a man. All right? So it is man that will redeem man. So Jesus Christ was a man. But he was a spot for the children of Israel's transaction was on the body of the animal sacrifice. Because fire is a picture of judgment. So when that fire touched the, anim the body of the animal, it was a uh, picture, all right, a typology of the judgment of God coming on the Passover lamb. What was the judgment of God against? It was not against man. It was against sin. Praise God. So, offerers were to eat the roasted body completely in a hurry same day. We have explained that in prophetic language, eating is what? Believing. We've said that several times. I don't want to go through that because of time. All right. Eating is believing. To eat of the tree of life is to believe on the doctrine of eternal life in Christ Jesus. All right. Alone. To eat of the roasted lamb is to believe on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for sins once and for all. So when they ate of it, they were saying they believed in what? The sacrifice of Jesus. The sacrifice of the Passover lamb. They believed in the shed blood which was shed for the remission of sins of many. What they were saying was that they believed in it. So to, the offerers were to eat the roasted body completely the same day. And the very fact that the, every single thing that was burnt, every aspect of the Passover lamb that was roasted was to be eaten and consumed. No part of the body of the Passover lamb was to be outside. It was all supposed to be eaten by the offerers, which means that the sacrifice was supposed to be inside of them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Was all supposed to be what? Inside of them. What that means is that the man who believes in Jesus, all right, Jesus comes to live where? Inside him. Glory to God. So to eat of Jesus, the result of eating of Jesus is that Jesus comes to take on, his, it takes a residence inside of you. Glory to God. So it is interpenetration. I come into Jesus, Jesus comes into me. Glory to God. I come into Jesus, Jesus comes into me. The fact that we are told that it was not to be eaten raw is that it's saying that, all right, there is no gospel or teaching of salvation that does not involve the fact that Jesus suffered for sins. Because when you say you eat the flesh of the Passover lamb raw, you are saying and you are neglecting to include the fiery judgment that came upon his body, all right, by being the what? The sacrifice of for our sins so he's talking about a sermon or a doctrine or a belief that talks about jesus being a spotless lamb but not being the spotless lamb that what 
took our place of punishment. You know, there's that teaching now where they talk about, oh, he was a prophet. Oh, he was a good man, but he did not die. All right. So anyone that believes on a Jesus that did not die, a Jesus that did not suffer for the sins of the world, a Jesus that did not carry on his body the sins of the world, is eating of the body raw. Hallelujah. Most of the religions of the world, that is what they believe. They are believing on a Jesus that did not die. A Jesus that was not killed, uh, that was not uh, crucified. A Jesus that did not hang on a cross. A Jesus that was not the proprietary, proprietary sacrifice for the sins of mankind. That is believing on him without the suffering. So if you don't believe on Jesus, that was what? The exchange, the Passover offering for the sins of mankind then you are eating of the Passover raw, all right, and sodding with water. Praise God. Are you with me so far? I said, are you with me so far? So we have also seen that the application of the blood of the Passover on the lintel meant that they were preserved from death outside of the house. What does that mean? The, all right, we've said that the man who all right as eating of the passover and as applied the blood all right death does not come near him so what has happened to him if death does not come near him what does he have he has what life john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only what begotten son when did he give his only begotten son he gave his only begotten son as a passover offering is that correct is that correct all right he gave his only begotten son as what a passover offering Hallelujah. So, in the Old Testament, God tells them in Exodus 12 to bring their Passover offering. Hallelujah. But that was a typology to show man that he was the one that was going to donate what? The Passover offering. Praise God. So, he asked them to bring a Passover offering under the law. But, all right, under grace, God is the one that what? Supplies the Passover offering. We have a type and shadow of this, all right, when um, Abraham was asked by God to offer his son, his only son, Isaac. And they get to Mount Moriah, all right, and as he was about to offer Isaac, all right, the angel of God stopped him, all right, and shows him, all right, a ram caught by the ticket. And before they get to Mount Moriah, Isaac said to Abraham, he said, he said, Dad, I see the wood, I see the knife, but I do not see a what? A sacrifice. What did Abraham say? He said, the Lord God shall prepare for himself a sacrifice. Praise God. Because the Passover sacrifice that will actually take away the sins of the world cannot be provided by men. It can only be provided by who? By God. Is this, is this, are you getting it? Aha. Uh -huh. Good. Now, it can only be provided by God. So the blood of the lamb that was applied on the lintel of the houses, praise God, all right, protected and preserved the people in life and kept death far from them, all right? And we have said, eating of the roasted um, body of the lamb is speaking, glory to God, is speaking about what? Is speaking about believing, all right, on Jesus crucified, all right, for the sins of the world. So if you believe in Jesus, that he died for your sins, what do you have? Life. If you do not believe in Jesus, that means if you are outside of that house, where they are eating that Passover, and where the blood is applied on the lintel, what is going to happen? You are in what? Death. Is this clear? Come on, is this clear? Very, very simple. So that typology, we see it in the Passover. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to, now, where I want us to sit today, what I just did for you is intro. Glory to God. Where I want us to sit today is in the Feast of Unleaving Bread. What, what is that? What is Feast of Unleaving Bread? Now, let's go back to Exodus chapter 12, verse 15. Now, the... Glory to God. So, the Feast of Passover is also called Feast of Unleaving Bread. The reason why it's called the Feast of Unleaving Bread is that the Feast of Unleaving Bread is preceded by the killing of the Passover lamb. So, remember we've read in Exodus 12 that the first month, on the 10th day, a lamb is picked. Is that correct? Then, on the 14th day, that lamb is what? Is killed. Now, after the killing of that lamb, the burning of the lamb, and the eating of the lamb, on that 14th day, they also eat unleavened bread. Remember we read it? We read it. Uh -huh. Now, look at it. Go back there. Verse 15. 
So he now says, seven days shall ye eat on living bread. Even the first day, ye shall put away what? Living out of your houses. You shall put away what? Church, talk to me. You shall put away what? Living out of your houses. For whosoever, pay attention, whosoever does what? Eateth living bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be what? Cut off from Israel. Cut off is death. Is that correct? You know death means separation. Uh -huh. Cut off means death. Separation. You will be cut off. Now let us, before we go on, let us um, decode some few things. What is living? -E what, what does living mean? First, let us look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Is it what's sweeting you? Is it? Is it? Are you? Uh -huh, okay. First Corinthians chapter 5. I like revelatory preaching a lot. When I'm talking about revelatory preaching, I'm talking about exegesis, exegetical preaching, where we explain scripture using scripture. Because this is the best way for you to ensure that saints grow in their faith in the scriptures. There is no way for you to cause, bring about faith in the word by ensuring people are growing in understanding the scriptures by using scripture to explain what? Scriptures. That's how people grow. Continuing in the faith. Growing in growth. When Paul talked about growth, he was not talking about exotericism. There are a lot of teachings that are exoteric. Esoteric teachings are teachings that are grounded in mysteries. Things that are mystical stuff. You know, a lot of words in exotericism, you will hear mystery, mystery, mystery. All right? So it is not teaching rooted and grounded in scriptures, explaining scriptures. It is usually based on experiences and all sort of highfalutin stuff that is devoid of proper exegetical Christian um, scriptural explanation. You cannot grow that way. You can be emotional. You can be excited. You can be saying, hey! You can be saying, ooh! Hey! But you see, you can't grow that way. You don't grow in Christ by being excited. You grow in Christ by revelatory preaching. Are you following what I'm saying? Huh? Revelatory preaching. It does not have to be exciting. It can even be boring. Are you following what I'm saying? It can be boring. It can be grueling. But you will grow. Revivals that are based on emotionalism. Revivals that are based on excitement. And mystical and exoteric concepts. They don't last. They don't last. And they don't produce believers that last. It will burn them goes. First Corinthians 5, 6. It says, Your glory is not good. Know ye not that, listen, know ye not that a little living, living net the whole lump. Huh. <laughs> Seven. It says, Purge out therefore the whole living, that ye may be a what? A new lump. As ye are what? Unliving. <laughs> for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Now, eight. Therefore, let us keep the feast. I hope you know he's speaking from the law. Because he's talking feasts. He's talking living. You remember unleavened bread. Are you paying attention? Uh -huh. So he now says, therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with what? Old living. Neither with living of what? My, oh, are you seeing that? Now, he's now using living as a metaphor for works of the flesh. Alright? Neither with the living of malice and wickedness. But what? With the what? Unliving bread of sincerity and what? And truth. So living is a metaphor for sin. So when you are talking of unliving bread, you are talking about a bread that is not tainted with sin. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Ah, church now. I'm not feeling this um, response. Glory to God. All right, so he's talking about, all right, a bread that is not tainted with sin. All right, look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 9. Notice it says, a little living, living at the whole world, lump. What is he saying when he says a little living, living at the whole lump? He's talking about the capacity of sin to spread. Okay, now, 
How many of you know when you are baking bread, you always put what they should put inside? They put what? Yeast. Why they put the yeast there? For it to swell, Abby. So when you put the yeast there, it takes over the bread. Such that when you put flour and all that, when you put yeast and it becomes big, the, you, you, will be think that you will begin to think that the, the bread component of that bread is bigger than what it appears to be. Because the yeast has taken over the bread. So when he says a little leaven, leaving the whole lump, he's saying that when sin comes into a place, it takes it over. Praise God. I said praise God. Look at Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 5. Galatians 5, 5. He said, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, all right, nor what? Uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. Ye did wrong, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Verse 9. He says, What? A little living, living at what? The whole lump. Are you seeing that? So the context of living is that living is talking about what? Sin. Hallelujah. Sin. So, when we are talking about eating the unleavened bread, so when we say unleavened, that means the bread does not have sin inside. Clear? So that means the bread is sinless. That's what he's talking about. Is that correct? Is that correct? So now, let's now ask, who is the bread referring to? Matthew 26. Matthew 26. I want to show you something so that you can see in, in, in content. Now pay attention. Matthew 26, 1. For you to see the context. It says, And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these things, he said to his, unto his disciples, He says, Ye know that after two days is the feast of what? The Passover. And the Son of Man is what? Is betrayed to be what? Crucified. Is it not at the feast of Passover we eat the unliving bread? Is that correct? Okay, good. Now let us now look at this. Verse 17. Turn to 17. It says, Now the first day of the feast of what? Unliving what? The disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the what? Question. Day what is this? What, what day is the first day of unleavened bread? Day what of the first month? Eh? Day 14, right? I want you to put it side by side with what we read in Exodus. Is day what? Day 14 of the month Abib. 14. Abib is the Jewish calendar. This thing. First month. Hmm? Now, I said, now the first day of the feast of the living bread, the disciples came and that uh, quiz people. I hope you know we are going to, it's not just um, First Samuel. Oh. I'm going to be asking a question from Christ in everything and Christ in Moses. So better go and dust and listen to the sermon. Oh. Eh? So it is well. <laughs> As I was saying. <laughs> now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, Where we that have we prepared for thee to eat the word? Passover. Question. What were they going to eat? Talk to me now. What were they going to eat? Is it not Passover and unleavened bread? Is that correct? Uh -huh. So it was Passover and unleavened bread. Remember, the Passover was eaten when? On the first day of unleavened bread. Is that what we have read? So on the same day they ate the unleavened bread, um, the Passover, they ate the unleavened bread. That was the first day. Correct? Uh huh. We are soon going to read that they ate the unleavened bread for seven days, from day 14 to day 21. We are going to read it. We will see it. Now, I want to show you something. Because I want to answer the question, who is the bread? We've said living is sin. So, unliving, we means without sin. Is that clear? Is that clear? Uh -huh. Now, let's look at this. He said, now, the first of the feast of unliving bread, the disciples came to Jesus and said unto him, where well, without that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? All right. Now, let's now go to verse 26. It now says, and as they were eating, what were they eating? No. What were they eating? 
What were they eating? Hey, you people have come again. Okay, let's read it. It says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread. So, before he took bread, what were they eating before he took bread? Eh? He passed over now. Right? Or should we go back to Exodus 12? Praise God. No, is it clear? Should we go back to Exodus 12? Should we go back to Exodus 12? Uh, wait, this is no wait. Let's go back to Exodus 12. Because I don't know where you, some of you, your mind is. I, uh, you know, thank you for this small studio on there, at least. If I was just preaching alone, I would not know that uh, some people are not following. Now listen, verse 7. And they shall take off the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Where they shall what? Or oh, let us from verse uh, 5. It says, your lamb shall be without blemish in the middle of the first year. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and he shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall what? Eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with what? Fire. And, are you seeing the sequence? Which one do they eat first? The Passover. After they eat the Passover, what do they eat? So let's go back. Matthew 26. Oh yeah? And as they were eating, what did they eat now? Passover, is that correct? Then he says, Jesus took what? Can you see the sequence? Uh -huh. He says, as they, as, as they were eating, Jesus took what? Bread. So normally, before this time, in the Passover of the Jews, they would have eaten the Passover. Then the head of the household will take bread and break it and say, um, um, this is um, um, how, um, wh when your son asks you, why are you eating this unliving bread? He will say it's because God delivered them from Egypt. And when the angel of death came to destroy um, people, they are, um, all Israelites were, were saved, but the firstborn of the Egyptians were killed. You understand? That's what he will say. But they did not know what that unliving bread represented. So this night, look at what Jesus did. He took bread. And he did what? Break it. And he what? Gave it to the disciples. And what did he say? Take it. This is my... Okay. So that means, remember, I'm beginning at Moses and in all the prophets, he what expounded unto them the things concerning what he expounded unto them in all the scriptures this thing concerning what himself. So the things concerning himself would include the Passover and the feast of what on living bread. Is this clear? Take it. This is my. So that means Jesus was trying to show them that. This Passover feast and the feast of unliving bread, feast you have been holding since the time of Moses is about who? Me. Claire? <laughs> so some people will say that Jesus was instituting Lord's Supper, Holy Communion here. No! That's not what he was doing. He was explaining what Passover that they have been doing for 2,500 years meant. Don't forget, everybody in that room was a Jew. So the context is Jewish. Are you paying attention? There was no Gentile there. So the context is Jewish. All the disciples, 12, they were Jews. And those 12 have been eating Passover since they were born. So you need to think like a Jew. And read the laws of Moses and link it. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So he says, What? Uh, take it. This is my body. So that means the bread is what? The body of Jesus Christ. Is that correct? Is scripture, has scripture answered that question? We have answered the scripture, the question with scripture. So the body is the body of Jesus. The bread is the body of Christ. That's Jesus, the body of Christ. Praise God. So that means the unliving bread 
of Exodus 12 is who? Christ Jesus. He was sinless. Right? Right? Should we prove that he was sinless? 2 Corinthians 5.21 I'm giving you this so that you can teach it. Somebody met me and was asking me about spirit, soul, and body. He said many preachers have said many things. That man is spirit, soul, and body. Man is not a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. I just answered him with scriptures. No point arguing. The, 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 the answers to every question theologically is inside the scriptures. If we submit to the lordship of the scriptures, then we'll have not have a problem. Praise the Lord. I was discussing with a wonderful friend of mine. And we're discussing this Elijah, this thing. When Elijah called down fire from heaven and it killed, he killed, um, uh, called down fire from heaven and he killed 51 men first time, killed 51 men second time. Then the third time, he, the, the third man begged. So people have been saying, who killed, who sent the fire? So we have some folks that have said that it was an evil spirit that cooperated with Elijah to cause the fire to come down. Because Christ is not Christocentric, it be something one, something like that. And they, are, they, are, they, want, they want to now use Luke chapter 9, verse 45 to 50. That when the disciples came to a city, and the city rejected um, Jesus, then the disciples said, they want to call down fire from heaven. Then Jesus said, um, the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's life, but to save it. And he says, you, do, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. You understand? So what they are now saying, they are not beginning to say, is that Jesus corrected or rebuked Elijah there. He said, Luke 9, 45 to 50, in that he told the disciples not to call fire. I said, you are, you, you are lying. That's not, what, that's not what that scripture is saying. Because the disciples were trying to call fire down to prove a point, to set two scores. Eh, you won't let us enter your city. We will show you. We will call fire down and destroy your city. That's what they were doing. Elijah wasn't, didn't call fire down to set his scores. Elijah called down fire to save his life. You think he went to Mount uh, Camel for picnic? No. He went there because they wanted to kill him. He went and the man had publicly prophesied that the king will not come down from the bed he has climbed upon. That's treason. It's like saying on Twitter, Buari will die in one week. SSS will come and pick you up. They'll pick you up. They say, explain your, you understand? Because Elijah was considered enemy against the states. He was against the king in the estimation of the security services. So they came and said, man of God, calm down. You think they come down and say they want to give him bread and eggs? So it's kind of, no, no, they'll kill him. The guy, first one came, he called. I said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. Where do you think the fire came from? Who released the fire? It was the angel. Because the third time when he said it, the angel whispered to his ear, don't worry. Go with him. Nothing will happen to you. Hallelujah. So he said, okay, so what is the justification for them? Couldn't they have been on that way? I will tell you. The issue was this. Many people don't realize that God will protect his plan. The plan of God, all right, for salvation through Christ Jesus, that was God's plan since Genesis. And he was going to protect it. Elijah was instrumental to that plan. Notice, after that incident, Elijah goes ahead to anoint his successor, Elisha. Then he goes ahead to anoint what? Jehu. What did Jehu do? Jehu toppled Jezebel. What was Jezebel trying to do? Jezebel was trying to turn Israel to a totally idolatrous state. A state given to idolatry. She, got, she was killing all the prophets, killing all the priests, and replacing the priests with priests of Baal. If that was allowed to happen, the Torah would have been extinct, praise God. Prophetic succession would have been what, truncated, such that you would not have a prophet to continue prophesying about the coming Christ. And to bear witness to what the other prophets have said. Imagine Christ coming in to an Israel where they have never read the Torah. Where they are not aware of the Old Testament book. How then will he fulfill what is written there? How will he now raise disciples who will say, oh, it is written here, it is written... Are you following? So the plan of God for salvation was paramount. And the angels of God with the prophets of God worked hand in hand to protect the plan. Praise God. 
The kings of Israel, that was what they were anointed to do, protect the plan. When their enemies wanted to come to finish and notice, Satan always raised enemies against Israel whose intent was to wipe Israel out. Because if Israel was wiped out, then the seed of Abraham would not come to manifestation. So the anointing on the king of Israel was to protect the plan. You, you were seeing war. No, it's the plan. The prophets were anointed to protect the plan. Hallelujah. So that there will be a clear link from Adam to Jesus. There will be a clear link from David to Jesus. There will be a clear link from Abraham to Jesus. Because Jesus is both the seed of Abraham and the son of David. The plan. Everybody say the plan. Praise God. That was not for today's service. Amen. Let's continue. Where were we? So Jesus is the unliving bread. Is that correct? So he that eats of the unliving bread, he lives. Now notice, let's go back there. Where were we? um, go back to Exodus chapter 12. And notice, in all those examples of when people died, God is not the one that did any killing. It was the proclamation of men and the agreement of angels. Why well, did it well? You will see it. <laughs> Praise God. The proclamation of what? Man, I will. So all those ones say, ah, it was an evil speak. Stop lying. You can't, those things, and you are breaking, those are, you are, you are, you know, it's gymnastics that is not, does not, it doesn't work. And it's unnecessary. The question you should ask when you see something like that, why? Study to find out why. Praise God. Study to find out what? Why? Why was Saul made king for David to eventually take his place? How is it that David sinned more than Saul, but was never rejected, but Saul was rejected? That is Bible study. Hallelujah. And I've explained that to you before, right? Have I, uh, uh, have I not explained that reason why? Have I not explained it why? I have, right? Uh -huh. Saul was from Benjamin. According to the prophecies of Judah in Genesis chapter, sorry, of Jacob in Genesis chapter 49, the kingship was not given to Benjamin. The kingship was given to who? To Judah. Which meant that the Messiah will come from the lineage of Judah. It is why Jesus is called what? The lion of what? The tribe of Judah. To Judah is the kingship given. But the reason why the first king of Israel was not Judah, was because according to the law of Moses, a bastard shall not come into his inheritance until the tenth generation. And the lineage of Judah was propagated through what we call incest. A father-in-law slept with his daughter-in-law. Jacob slept with Tamar unknowingly. And she gave birth to Pharez. Pharez is the bastard son of the illegitimate relationship between Jacob and Tamar. But Jesus comes from the lineage of Pharez. So if you count from Pharez to David, it's ten generations. Hallelujah. Ten generations. So... Israel requested for a king 40 years early. God always already planned for them to have a king. But because the lineage of Judah, to whom kingship was promised, could not enter into their inheritance until the law was fulfilled, until the 10th generation was fulfilled. Are you following? So what God did was, in between, instead of giving them a king, he gave them judges. Judges, 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 judges. Then when they pushed, he gave them a king, Saul. Saul was just to be there till David came of age. When David came of age, it was supposed to be Saul to hand over to David, not Jonathan. Jonathan was a spiritual man. He saw it and aligned. Hallelujah. So what you do is you ask why. That's the secret of Bible study. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. 
As I praise the Lord. So let's go back to Exodus 12. Are you learning something? Uh huh. Now it says, Seven days. How many days are they the unleavened bread? Seven days are ye eat the unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away living out of your houses. For whosoever eateth living bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And the first day, listen, and in the first day there shall be what? An holy convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be what? An holy convocation to you. No matter of no manner of work shall be done in them, which means it is Sabbath. Is that correct? That means it's what? It is what? Now remember what we talked about the Sabbath. What is Sabbath? Sabbath is in who? It's in Christ. Remember that. Because Sabbath is talking about rest. Rest from what? Walk and rest on what Christ and what God has made what? Available. All right. So it said, There shall be an holy convention to so human and work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And he shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this same same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance. For what? Ever. He now says, In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month, at even. That's twenty-one days. Seven days shall there be no living found in your houses, for if ever eat it, eat it that which is living, even that soul shall be cut off from the um, congregation of Israel, where it be a stranger or born in the land. Ye shall eat nothing living, in all your habitations shall ye eat living bread. Praise God. I said, praise God. Now, I want us to see something very important. Okay? Very, very important. Now, if you look at Hebrews 12, 14, what does he say? He says, and this day shall be unto you. For what? For what? For what? Now, I want you to hold on to that word memorial. It is the Hebrew word zikron. Okay? Zikron. Now, <laughs> Praise God. Now, uh, let us answer the Holy Communion question. Did Jesus command us to be eating bread and, eating bread and drinking wine? Now, first, let me first of all say, there is nothing wrong with eating bread and wine. What did I say? There's nothing wrong. You like get a gege bread and get coke. Praise God. Where is Paul? Is he hiding somewhere? Paul, I want to see your note too. Uh -huh. All right. There's nothing wrong with eating bread and wine. Nothing. If you take bread, agege bread and coke, praise God, and you say, this is the body of Jesus broken for me. And you eat it. There was even one, I saw one video. You guys see that video where they were sharing a bar as communion. Everyone was sitting down inside the service. And the, the man of God was with a bar of fufu in his hand. And was, I know mean, you saw it. And he was cutting the fufu. And people were going around. And he put inside soup. And they were eating it. Glory to... I'm sure they didn't have bread. So they improvised. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Ah, you see what communion is costing? Now, pay attention. Let me give you something that you can use. There are four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Is that correct? Now, the communion story appears in just three of them. In Matthew, in Mark, and in Luke. It does not appear in John. John leaves it out. Praise God. But there is something I found so amazing because... I followed I, and I arranged, I, looked, I studied this, the progression of the chapters of Matthew. And I want you to do when you get home. We don't have time to do it tonight. I followed, I did the progression of the chapters of Matthew up until 26. Then you come to Mark up until chapter 14. Then you come to Luke up until chapter 22. All these chapters I've mentioned are the chapters where you have the story of feast of unleavened bread jesus eating the passover with his disciples okay now in john chapter 13 the feast is mentioned but the my body broken for you all of that is not mentioned praise the lord instead 
what you have in John is the teaching of Jesus that went on at the Passover table that Matthew, Mark, Luke did not mention. For example, that they may be one as we are one. My, um, um, John 17. Amen. It was at the Passover table. John 16. That the comforter may come, all those ones. All right. John 14, 26. John 16, 13. All of those things, it was at the Passover table. Those teachings happened there. It was after the teachings were done that Jesus now said, Praise God. Hallelujah. In the next chapter after John 17, let us go to Gethsemane. And at Gethsemane, he was arrested. In those chapters, Jesus also talked about love. Uh, you see, maybe next week, we have a, there's a midweek service before LMM, right? So maybe I don't, know, I, I don't know whether we'll be able to do that. So I can show you. So that you will now find out something. Find out that when Apostle Paul begins to talk about the Lord's Supper, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he talks about it with the context of love. Amen? Let me stop there. We'll look at it. Listen, you can study it before next week. Praise God. So you, uh, when I yeah, you look at it. But let me show you this. Now, let, I want us to pay attention to something very clever. And I want you to look at it. We are going to read Matthew 26, 26. Luke 22, 15 to 19. Mark 14, 22 to 25. And 1 Corinthians 11, 21, 25. Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh -huh. I want you to pay attention to something. Are you enjoying this? Are you enjoying this? Hmm. At LMM, you know we have time, Abby. Uh, you know we have time. As much as possible, we have time as much as possible. We'll, we'll try. Now, Matthew 26 to 26. I want you to show you something so that you will know how to read your Bible. And to know that there are certain things that if they don't check out, in the Gospels and the Epistles, where should you go and check? Where do you go and check? Old Testament. You understand? Because it's, they are quoting and explaining from where? Old Testament. Hmm. It is the lack of understanding of that that makes people think that when Jesus was, what Jesus was saying in, in Matthew 26 was a new Lord's Supper. So you hear people saying that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. Have you ever heard people say that? That Jesus, you understand? He instituted, a, Jesus did a new one. That in the Old Testament they were doing Passover, but Jesus instituted his lack of understanding. That makes people say that he didn't institute anything. He was explaining what was. You understand? Now Matthew 26, 26. Look how it says. Everybody read one to go. Why well, are going to read it? It says, and as they were what? Jesus took bread and what? Blessed it. And what? Break it. And gave it to what? The disciples. And said what? Take, eat, this is my body. So the unliving bread, he said, this is what? Good. Now look at 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye what? All of it. For this is my what? Of what? Which is what? Shed for many. For the remission of what? Of sins. Guys, I want to ask a question. Look at me. In the Passover, was there any wine in Exodus 12? Is there any wine mentioned in Exodus 12? What was mentioned? Blood. Right? Right? Blood was mentioned. But no wine. So that means, what is going on here is that the wine represents the blood. They cannot drink the blood of an animal but they can drink the blood of what? They can drink the what? The wine. Praise God. Now, you will not find any place in the scriptures where Passover involved drinking wine. Hallelujah. But, from studying of Jewish tradition, of how they kept the Passover seder, wine was always involved. All right? Wine was always involved, but that's not today's summer. But I think I've taught you before when I talked about the four cups. All right, of the Passover, when the, the Jewish, uh, um, Jewish tradition, but that's not for today. Praise God. Now, he said, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye what? All of it. For this is my blood of the new what? Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So that means the blood that was applied on the lintel in Exodus 12, Jesus said, It is my what? It is my what? So that means the, the bread is my body. 
and the blood is my word. Is my word. First Corinthians 5 7 tells us that the meat is also what? Jesus. The, he is our Christ, uh, the Passover, all right, offered for us. First Corinthians 5 7. So that means the bread is Jesus, the blood is Jesus, the meat is Jesus. Is that clear? Is that clear? But I want you to note what is mentioned. Take it, this is my body. And he took the gulf, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the new testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Look at Luke 22, 15. Now listen. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat what? This Passover with you before what? I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled where? In the kingdom of what? Of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourself. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. 19. Pay attention, no. Are you paying attention? Mm -hmm. All right. 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, What? This is my body, which is given what? For you. This do in what? Was that in Matthew? Come on now. Was remembrance in Matthew 26? Guys, talk to me now. Was it in Matthew 26? Was it there? Did you see any remembrance in Matthew 26? <laughs> it's only Luke we see it in Abby. <laughs> now, next one, 20. It says, likewise, also, the cup afterwards. Church, I, I need you to read or I'll close this service. Though. Likewise, also, the cup afterwards, saying, this cup is what? The New Testament in my blood, which is what? How many of you have noticed something already? The cup is mentioned twice in Luke. It is mentioned in 17. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. Correct? For I say unto you, I will not drink of the food of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Is that correct? Then he comes again and says, Again, 20. Likewise, also the cup after supper. Saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for what? Which means we already see an evidence in Luke that they drank the cup twice. Is that clear? They drank of the cup how many times? Twice. So we will come back to that reason and all of that. But understand that Matthew was written, amen, by someone who was an eyewitness, correct? Matthew was there. We are going to read Mark now. Okay? Let's look at Mark. Mark 14. He says, And as they did it, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, Take it. This is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine, until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Pay attention. Now, Matthew and Mark sound alike in some parts. Then Mark and Luke sound alike in some parts. Is that correct? Especially when he says, We will drink, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, except. So that means there is another cup. Praise God. So Jesus, in Luke, we see a cup they drank, then they took bread, then after they took bread, they drank another cup. Then he now talks of another cup he will drink with them in the kingdom. Is that correct? So at least he's talking about three cups. Is that correct? Good. Now, I want you to see something. So, Mark and Matthew align in that Matthew and Mark don't talk about remembrance of me. Correct? Do you see remembrance? This do in remembrance of me. Do you see there? 
We don't see it in Matthew and we don't see it in Mark. Correct? Good. Now, let us now go to 1 Corinthians 11. Are you there? 1 Corinthians 11, 21. <laughs> Glory to God. He says, for in eating, let us read verse 20, sorry. He says, when you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is what? Is drunken. What? Now, how do you know that when it says drunken? You know, how if you get drunk on fruit juice? So it was alcoholic wine, Amen. Mm -hmm. What have you not houses to eat and to drink in, or despise it the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Pay attention. It means that the Lord's Supper was a feast where people came and ate together. Amen. Amen. So it is like the feast of what? On living bread and the feast of what Passover because they came together and they did what ate together. Amen. It's like you kill an asu and everybody eats that asu. Praise God. Because they roasted it. That's asu now. Is that not asu? <laughs> Passover was asu. Glory to God. He now said, Look at verse 23. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took what? Huh. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of what? Who is this one alike? Like? Who is this one like? Look. Look. <laughs> Look, right? Ah. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of what? Who is that alike? No. Luke didn't say that after they drank the cup. Did you notice that? <laughs> Amen? Can anyone find when Luke said that in reference to the blood? To the cup? Luke only said that with the, the, the bread, right? Church now, check. Or should we go and check again? Should I come back? Eh? Let's go back. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> oh praise god all right so luke 22 right 15 now look at this and he said unto them we desire have desire to eat the passover with you before i suffer for i said unto you i will not more eat thereof until you before in the kingdom of god and I took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourself. For I said to it, I will not drink of the food of wine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it. And gave unto them, all right, and said, This is my body which is given for you. This do in what? Remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. It's finished. No, as oft as he do this in remembrance of me. Which means, Paul, in his explanation, all right, kind of like elaborated, saying that because the first is about Christ, the second is about Christ. Is that correct? Now, let's now go to that remembrance. Where then did they get it from? Now, understand something. Luke was a companion of Paul. Is that correct? Luke was the writer of the book of Acts. Luke was the doctor that went around with Paul. 
So it means that because Luke wrote the gospel of Luke, the quotation of Peter, I'm sorry, of Paul must have been from what Luke wrote. Praise the Lord. Because Paul was not yet a Christian when Jesus was alive. Are you following? So he must have relied on what, what people told him. So he's now telling when he says the Lord revealed to him, he's saying, based on what happened, Jesus opened my eyes as to what was really going on. Are you paying attention? Aha. Uh -huh. Now, that word remembrance is found in Exodus 12, 14. Are you ready? Okay. Maybe we should read verse 11. So eating the bread, remembrance, right? Drinking the, the cup, remembrance, correct? Now let's read. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins gathered, Exodus 12, 11. And your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the lost Passover. He says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. 13. And the blood shall be to you for a what? A token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will what? Pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. 14. And this day shall be unto you for a what? For a what? That word memorial is the Hebrew zikron. It means remembrance. So what was Jesus doing? Or what was Jesus actually saying? He was saying that the Passover and the drinking of the cup of the wine, all right, to the Jews, they were to continually do it to remember what God did. Praise God. What God did to remember it, to remember it. Why were they to remember it? Colossians chapter 2. What happened to Jesus? <coughs> Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16. Are you with me? Let no man, therefore, judge you in meat. What meat? What meat? Uh -huh. Or in drink? What drink? Hmm. Or in respect of an holy day? What holy day? Hmm. Of the new moon or of the Sabbath days? First day, Sabbath. Seventh day, Sabbath. Everybody read 17 like a mass choir. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So they are a shadow of things to what? They are a shadow of things to... First Corinthians 11. There is a shadow of things to... Hmm. Verse 25. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament blood. This do ye as oft as he drink it in remembrance of me. 26. For as often as he eats this bread and drink this cup, Ye did show what? You see those show what? The Lord's death till what? So that means the instruction God gave to the Israelites in Exodus was to keep the Passover and to eat the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why? Because by their actions, they were to keep it in memory in other generations. What were they doing? They were showing the death of the Lord. In those ceremonies, till he come. So that when he comes, he can sit down in Matthew 26, 26, and say, this is the body. The bread that you have been eating for 2,500 years is me. 
The blood, the cup you have been drinking for 2,500 years is what? Is me. The blood that was applied on the lintel is my blood. Praise God. Believe on me. Take your eyes away from the bread. Take your eyes away from the sin. I am the one you are to believe on. Hallelujah. Next week, we'll be going to the manna. Because the manna is a kind of bread. Jesus metaphorically says, All right, I am the living bread that comes from heaven. That any man may eat of me and live forever. So in many se separate instances, he uses different things to say, I am the one you have to believe in. And if you believe on me, you have eternal life and you will be preserved from death. You do show the Lord's death. Till what? Till he comes. Now, when a person takes bread and wine, he is to proclaim, he is not showing the Lord's death. Hallelujah. He is showing that the Lord has what? Has died. But the truth about it is this. The true proof that the Lord has died and is alive today is not in the bread and in the wine. The true proof that the Lord has come, has died, and is alive today is the Christian. Because the Christian is the proof of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Christian is the proof of the glorification of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the Christian has the spirit of Jesus living inside him. As long as a man can say, I belong, in I, uh, I belong to Jesus. And he stands in front of a sick. And he says, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That name being effectual is proof that Jesus is alive. Not bread and wine. The bread and wine was a symbol. By their actions and what they did, they were foreshadowing the coming of the Lord. But the substance is here now. We have to move past the shadows and enter into the substance of that which was promised us. What's that? The Spirit. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? Lift up your hands and just bless you. Ah, time has fast spent. I hope it was worth your time. Oh, I really do hope that your eyes have been opened tonight to see Christ beyond the shadows, beyond the bread, the wine, the meats, the feasts, the days. You have just listened to a message by Rev. Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. For other messages, visit our website at www.oikeacc.org. Remain blessed.